Good day viewers, this is Tech Mag TV News. My name is Stephanie Truta and these are the headlines. Nine army officers promoted. Zimbabwean vice president's ill ex-wife denied permission to leave the country. Kupe, G40 and ZANU PF welcomed to join CCC. Suspended Harare Mayor Mafume recalled. ZEC calls penalties for slanderers. And now in our top local news, President Emerson Mnangagwa, who is the Commander-in-Chief of the Zimbabwe Defense Force, yesterday promoted nine lieutenant colonels to colonel. The promotions were made in terms of the Defense Act and are effective from March the 25th. The promoted are Colonels Augustine Ruambara, Chakaipa Mukuna, Job Mugazambi, Clements Macheka, Nuna Bonaventure Nube, Simbarashe Zou, Cladi Mapepa, Rita Makantla, and Kudzanai Mauta. They were conferred the new rank by the Chief of Staff Administration, Major General Matatu, who was standing in for Commander Zimbabwe National Army Lieutenant General David Sagauke at the ceremony held at Josiah Manga Tongagara Barracks. Major General Matatu commended the senior officials for diligently executing their duty in the ZNA. Mary Mubaiwa, the estranged wife of Zimbabwean's Vice President Constantino Chiwenga, is said to have a right hand amputated after she was denied permission to leave the country to travel to South Africa. Chiwenga is the retired Army General who led the push to remove the late strong arm Robert Mugabe in November 2017. Beatrice Mtietwa, the lawyer representing Mbaiwa, told the court that doctors had reached the conclusion that her right arm needed to be amputated. Tetra said the doctors cannot save her arm and that when she is medically fit, they will have to amputate the right arm. News24 understands that Mubaiwa developed severe sepsis following surgery. Mubaiwa was meant to appear in court on Monday, facing charges of assaulting her former childminder, but didn't because of her medical condition. For months, Mubaiwa appealed to the courts in Zimbabwe to allow her to go to South Africa for medical treatment, but her appeals were denied. In the report filed to the courts, Dr. Sen Mubaiwa relied on sedatives to ease the pain that caused her sleepless nights, while several of her limbs had become swollen. CCC President Nelson Chamisa's legal representative advocate Tavani Mpofu says the newly formed political party is open to welcome MDCT leader Tokozani Kupe, former G40 kingpins including ZANU-PF, to be part of the party's membership. Writing on the Twitter, Pofu said that the movement belongs to the citizens and there is room for Makupe. Kupe said tongues wagging after she showed up for a press conference donning a Citizens Coalition for Change t-shirt while urging her followers to vote for the Nelson Chamisa-led outfit. Despite endorsing Chamisa, Kupe recently got a rude awakening from the CCC supporters who used social media to encourage its leader to block her from joining the newly rebranded party. Kupe, who was recently kicked out of her makeshift Monzora-led organization, the MDCT, made the announcement despite pressure against her inclusion from many Chamisa supporters who said that they fear she will bounce once again and cause diversions in Chamisa's newly formed Citizens Coalition for Change party. Less than a week after spat by elections caused by recalls, suspended opposition Harare Mayor Jacob Mafume has been recalled as Ward 17 councillor. Mafumi, elected as PDP ticket in 2018, has just got back to work as mayor after he was suspended from office on allegations of gross misconduct and violation of the Urban Councils Act. The PDP was then a party to a group of opposition parties that cascaded ahead of the general election under the banner of the MDC alliance before the spectacular disintegration caused by internet, internal fights. Local Government Minister July Moyo on Wednesday notified Harare City Council of the development through a letter dated March the 28th, 2022. Moyo said the People's Democratic Party had notified him of Mafumi's recall. PDP seconded Mafumi to council under the MDC Alliance Pact in 2018. The Zimbabwe Electoral Commission has called for the enactment of laws that punish individuals and organizations that seek to discredit the commission and electoral processes by making unproven allegations. 
This comes after pressure groups such as Team Pacheru have accused Zek of electoral malpractices over the past few years, which they allege are meant to create an, an even electoral playing field to give an advantage to the ruling Sanu PF party. Speaking on ZBC News' current affairs program, Face the Nation on Tuesday, ZEC spokesperson Jeff Mangwana said those making false accusations about the commission and electoral processes must be punished. Meanwhile, Mangwana expressed satisfaction with how the 26 by elections were held, saying the absence of rains ensured that no logistic challenges were encountered. Zimbabwe has begun repossessing idle land from black farmers who benefited from controversial land reforms two decades ago, Agriculture Minister Axis Musaka said on Wednesday. People's farmland who is lying unused and those who own multiple farms will lose land, he said. The land will be given to aspiring farmers from a waiting list left from earlier rounds of land reform, he said. Masuka said in the statement that he has allocated 99% of the land that has been taken from the blacks and being relocated to the blacks. Government will not repossess productive farms, he added, and families will be left with their farms. Speaking at the opening of the annual tobacco auctions, Musaka said some repositions had already occurred but did not give more detail. Musaka's deputy, Vangelis Haritato, has told AFP that government has allowed former white commercial farmers to return to some farms through joint ventures. In a statement, Haritato stressed the need to take the country to self-sufficiency in food and nutrition. According to the Famine Early Warning Systems Network, some 10 million of Zimbabwe's nearly 15 million people risk hunger by September after a poor rainy season. The country has long depended on donors for basic food supplies. And now in our regional news, Senegal's rising food prices ahead of Ramadan, with less than 10 days before Ramadan, the month of fasting for Muslims, Senegal is experiencing an increase in the price of basic foodstuffs. Many residents are laminating the increase in prices, with some in the capital Dakar pointing to the closure of Senegal's border with Mali as the main cause. ECOWAS and the Western African Economic and Monetary Union in January imposed a range of economic and diplomatic measures against Mali, including border closures. The movement was meant to deal a blow to Mali's junta, whose intention to remain in power for several more years, the regional bloc described as totally unacceptable. But people in countries like Senegal, which shares borders with the Shenanian nation, are bearing the brunt. They are not alone. Analysts have noted or observed price increases in Northwest African countries such as Nigeria, Gambia, Guinea and Burkina Faso. Ramadan for millions of Muslims around the globe has been suspended for two years running due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Freight costs have been significantly higher and there has been a disruption of the food supply chain. The war in Ukraine has also sparked a rise in the prices of basics. Widespread criticism of the government is growing in Ghana after Parliament approved a new electronic transaction tax, which the government says will help raise 900 million US dollars in much needed revenue. The e levy bill passed on Tuesday will introduce a 5.1% tax on electronic money transfers and transactions. President Nana Akufo Ados has said the move will help address the problems from unemployment to the country's high public debt. But for many Ghanaians, the tax represents yet another burden. As living costs heightened by soaring fuel prices due to the Ukrainian crisis piles even more pressure. Legislation passed the law after opposition minority walked out of the debate on Tuesday. Ghana has been struggling to revive its economy, which has been badly affected from the fallout of the coronavirus pandemic. The West African nation reopened its land and sea borders this week after a two-year closure. And now in our international news, China pulls funding from major coal-fired power plant Rio Zim Ltd. A Zimbabwean company that has been banking on Chinese financing to build a major coal-fired power plant says it is now looking for alternatives backers as China pulls back on funding such projects overseas. The effort by Rio Zim Ltd, one of Zimbabwe's biggest mining and energy companies, reflects how China's recent U-turn on foreign coal financing is forcing developing nations across Africa and Asia to rethink their energy plans. China, which has been a top fundraiser of coal power projects around the globe, announced in September it will not build new coal projects abroad as part of efforts to curb future carbon emissions. Energy and climate specialists are watching to see the impact, including whether it will force a speedier shift to cleaner energy, resulting in other fundraisers stepping in or lead to power shortages.
Zimbabwe, which already suffers from a lack of electricity, has been among the biggest coal reserves in Africa. Plans for the multi-billion dollar Sengwa power plant in northwest Zimbabwe involve more than doubling the country's current electrical capacity. Australian journalist on trial in China for a spy charge. Ms. Cheng is accused of illegally supplying state secrets overseas. Her family maintains her innocence. The Chinese-born Australian, who is working for Chinese state media outlet CGTN prior to a detention in August 2020, has repeatedly raised concerns over a detention and called for basic standards of justice to be met. Little is known about the exact nature of Ms. Cheng's alleged offences. Speaking to reporters outside of the courtroom on Thursday, Australian's ambassador to China, Graham Fletcher, said that the other Australian officials have been denied entry into the hearing. Chinese courts often bar outsiders from trials deemed as politically sensitive. Prior to her detention, Ms. Cheng had worked in Beijing for several years. Many of her family members, including her two children, live in Australia. In August 2020, she suddenly disappeared from television and could not be contacted by friends or relatives. Her employers, CGTN, the English language channel of the state broadcaster, also wiped its websites of Ms. Cheng's profile page and work. China initially announced she was being held on national security grounds and in February last year, authorities formally arrested Ms. Cheng on spying charges. And now in entertainment news, the first ever chart of Afrobeat's popular songs in the United States went live on Tuesday. It ranks 50 Afrobeat songs based on streams and downloads in the country. US magazine Billboard announced a few days ago it would team up with festival company Afro Nation to launch America's first ever Afrobeat's charts. Nigerian singer KC tops the first ever Billboard US Afrobeat song charts with the title Love Noatiti. Fireboy DML featuring Ed Sheeran on track Peru takes second place with Wizkid featuring Justin Bieber and Thames taking third place on the podium. The chart ranking Afrobeat's popular songs in the United States went live this Tuesday. This has been Tech Mag TV News. My name is Stephanie Truta. Thank you for watching. Please share, like and subscribe as we keep bringing you more top stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.